This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries, and welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. If you tune in to these, these broadcasts on Thursdays and Sundays, and we introduce them the same way you might think, like he's saying the same things. Amen. Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries, welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. You'll have to get past that introduction to delve into what God is saying as it pertains to the kingdom of God. Amen. The Lord told us to preach the kingdom, the same thing that Jesus preached. Amen. The same thing that his disciples preached, the same thing that John the Baptist preached. Amen. The same thing that Jesus told us to preach. Amen. And so, each week we bring you insight into the kingdom of God. Amen. And so we, we deal with, amen, mindsets. Amen. We deal with hearts. Amen. And so for God to do what he wants to do, he has to penetrate the heart. He has to break through, so to speak, you know, that if you would ask anyone, especially a Christian, you know, they believe that they know to a degree. Amen. And that is true, but there is levels, levels of, of, of knowing the Lord. There's a beginning of knowing. And then it is according to your hunger. It is according to your thirst of you knowing the Lord. That we have a covenant with the Lord. Oh, the Bible talks about that in this new covenant, that no one would have to teach his neighbor or his brother to know the Lord, for we all shall know him from the least to the greatest. Amen. So that means in this new dispensation, there's no limitation in knowing God. That doesn't mean that you automatically know the Lord, for Jesus says that he didn't know certain people, and they didn't know him when they got in his presence for judgment. Amen. And so turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, amen. And we're going to deal with what God placed on my heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. We, we have a lot of reading, and so I'll be as brief as possible, but we have to get through this, this reading to, to get to the very point that the Lord wants us to get to. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning with verse 13 through 18. It says, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. That means the law. But their minds were blinded for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted at the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from <coughs> glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. So the Spirit of the Lord is transforming us to the same image of Jesus from one level of glory unto the other. Amen. And so it talks about when Moses would spend time with God upon the mount of God, in the cloud of God, in the presence and in the glory of the Lord, when he would come back down to talk to the people, his face would shine. Amen. And the degree of the glory on Moses was so great, even though they were under a different dispensation, okay? The glory on Moses' face was so great, even though they were under the Old Testament, that the children of Israel could not look steadfastly into his face and they asked him to put a veil over his face because of the glory. So they could not look into the glory. Where their heart was, they could not look at that glory. They could not stand it. They asked Moses 
to put a veil over his face. And so Moses is representing the law, that old dispensation, the Old Testament. Amen. And there was glory on the Old Testament, such glory that the children of Israel could not look at what was passing away. Amen. And so it, it ends up saying that we are with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord as in a mirror. We are transformed into that same image of glory. Amen. From one image, from one level of glory to another. Amen. And so what do we see? We see that there is a veil between dispensations. Amen. There is a veil. And yet, God held out to man to draw near unto him and to come into the glory. Because Moses did it. Moses proved that you could draw near unto God. But they refused. They say, we don't want to hear God. You hear God and you tell us what he says. Amen. When, Mo when God came upon the mountain to meet the people. And the mountain shook, amen, and there was dark clouds and, and lightnings and sounds, amen, because that which is of God, of the glory, was touching the earth, amen. That which is holy and pure of God was touching the earth, and so there was a, a, a great tumult, amen, yet God came to meet the people, to greet the people, to spend time with the people, amen. And so we see a thing that there is a veil between dispensations of God and yet there are those who are able to enter into the presence of the Lord. Amen. To, to transcend the, whatever dispensation to operate in a greater glory. Amen. So Moses so what is it about Moses that was different from the children of Israel? It says that Moses knew the ways of God, but the children of Israel only knew his acts. Amen. So Moses entered into the presence of the Lord to spend time with God, to know his ways. Amen. There are... Um, songs of Moses, there are Psalms of Moses which show that Moses was a worshiper of God. Amen. And worshiping the Lord brings you into another dispensation of glory. Amen. In Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, verse 3 and 4. Matthew chapter 12, verse 3 and 4. And he, Jesus, said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, he and those that were with him? How he entered the house of God and ate the showbread, which is not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only the priest. So we see somebody else who is able to operate in a dispensation which was not ready yet, amen, or was not on the scene, and yet he's able to operate in a dispensation, amen, that was ahead of him. Amen. And so what is the characteristic of David? Amen. David was a worshiper. Amen. So worship brings you into the, the next level of glory. The next dispensation that all the laws, all the things that hinder, amen, that you're able to break through by your love for God, amen, and to the, the desire to worship God, amen, that Moses was a worshiper, David was a worshiper, amen, and worshiping the Lord 
um, caused the veil between those dispensations to be removed. Amen. And so we see a secret. We see a thing. Amen. That God desires for us to worship him. And then it removes all limitations. Amen. Of religion. It, re it removes all limitations if we actually love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. In St. John chapter 4. So worship removes the veil. Worship removes limitation. St. John chapter 4, verses 18 through 24. This is the Samaritan woman at, at the well, verse 18. Jesus says, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you have now that you now have is not your husband. In that you have spoken truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain in Samaria. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so the, the woman at the well, amen, Jesus reads her mail, so to speak. He says, you've had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. So she perks up. She says, I perceive you are a prophet. So she had this burning question, amen, that if this is a prophet, he can answer this question, amen, that our father said that we're supposed to worship on this mountain in Samaria, but you Jews say we are supposed to worship in, for instance, the temple in Jerusalem. Amen. So which is it? Where are we supposed to worship? Amen. Because I got two options. I got Samaria. And you notice she's, she's claiming the patriarch. She says that you know this well when Jesus asked for water that our father Jacob, how he dug this well. So she's, she's claiming the patriarch, amen, and I believe she sincerely wants to know where to worship. Is it upon this mountain or is it Jerusalem? Amen. The Jews have no dealings with the uh, Samaritans, so she, she's kind of caught in a place if she really wants to enter into worship. And so Jesus, as he often does, People ask a question according to their knowledge. And then Jesus begins to give them more knowledge. He says, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. He says, you worship what you do not know. That's verse 22. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Amen. That's the people of God, those that are in covenant with the Lord. I'll show you that in, in the word of God. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers, so there's a such things as true worshipers, will worship the Father where? She asks, where? <laughs> he says, in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so sometimes our linear thinking does not line up. The Bible talks about how that the, the spiritual person and the things that are of the spirit, that the Holy Spirit compares spiritual things to, to spiritual things. And so we come with, with our natural knowledge. Amen. And sometimes that does not compute, but just keep listening to Jesus. Amen. He will begin to reveal a thing. So where do we worship? In spirit, in the spirit, and in truth. Amen. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Why? Because God is spirit. 
And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the good news is that we can worship God in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? That our heart is our spirit. Amen. The Bible says glorify the Lord in your, in your spirit. Amen. Serve the Lord with your body. Your, your members are yielded unto righteousness or supposed to be. But we touch base with God with our heart. So spirit to spirit. That's what God is looking for. God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so the place of worship, amen, or the dimension of worship is in the spirit and in accordance to the truth. Amen. So the place of the spirit of God and the truth. Amen. So our heart worships the Lord in the spirit and in the truth. Amen. And that God is looking for such. He says, the hour has come, is coming, where the true worshipers. That word hour means a time of dispensation of a revelation of true worship. Amen. The hour has come. It's, it's, the time has come, Jesus says. A, a revelation, a dispensation of of worship that you did not know, even though others had tapped into it. David had tapped into it. Obed-Edom had tapped into it, amen. Moses had tapped into that dispensation. There was no veil preventing them. They tapped into the, the dispensation of a revelation of true worship. God is looking for true worship, <laughs> amen. And so, we see everything, let me say this, Jesus taught from the Old Testament, amen. So the words in red and the things that are of the gospel, it's, it's a teaching of the Old Testament, amen. And so the gospel teaching is from the Old Testament. The, the apostles mainly wrote, amen, much of the gospel, and then the epistles, the apostles mainly wrote the epistles, which is a revelation of the, the new. Amen. The Bible says people read the Old Testament and there is a veil, but if you turn into the Lord, the veil is, is taken away. That veil is taken away in Christ. Amen. And so the veil, whatever dispensation you are in, the veil must be taken away for you to enter into a new dispensation. And the veil is taken away through a revelation of worship. <laughs> Amen. So you have to know. You have to know what worship is. Worship is to adore while loving. Amen. To adore the Lord while you're loving him. It means to kiss. Your Bible says kiss the son lest he be angry. It's, it means to fall prostrate before the Lord. It means to serve from a heart, amen, of all the things that are above. In other words, when you serve the Lord, it's because you are adoring him. You serve the Lord while you are loving him. You serve the Lord while you are kissing him. You serve the Lord while you are prostrate before him. So the posture of the heart is love and adoration and worship. Amen. So, so you serve the Lord through you worshiping him. Amen. I'm trying to make that connection. I don't know if I'm making that connection. Amen. You serve the Lord while you're adoring him. You serve the Lord while you are loving him. Amen. You serve the Lord while you are worshiping while you are worshiping him. Amen. And so everything that Jesus says, amen, which seems to offend is to bring you closer. Jesus often would say things which seem to offend. It's like the Syrophoenician woman asking for Jesus to cast the devil out of her daughter. Jesus does not say a word. The disciples say, send her away. Amen. Jesus is not meat to give the children bread to dogs. Amen. He first says that he has only come, <laughs> he, 
<laughs> Jesus says, I've only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is true. <laughs> then he says, it's not meat to give the children's bread to dogs. Amen. Everything that Jesus says as an offense is actually to bring you closer. She said, yea, Lord. Amen. But she says, even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Jesus said, wow. Not seen such faith, not in all of Israel. When you go home, your daughter will be completely healed and delivered. What did she, what did she do? She entered into a dispensation. Jesus said plainly, he said plainly that I've only come to the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. He said it plainly. The, the, the way for Jesus not to be lying is for her to enter into another dispensation through worship. <laughs> she worshiped him. The, the only way to take away that veil, there was something hindering. <laughs> Man, Jesus got her there, didn't he? <laughs> Man. So the veil was removed through worship. <laughs> and so the next level of glory, amen, she transcended time, amen. She transcended the cross, amen. She got over there, hallelujah, as if that had taken place, amen. She traveled in another dimension, amen, another dispensation, amen. All these people learned it through worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So she got there through worship. Jesus says salvation is, is of the Jews. So I'll, I'll deal with that very quickly in Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Verse 28 and 29. Amen. It says, for he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor circumcision, that is covenant, that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit. Again, the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. So it is the circumcision of the heart. And so we are the people of God, and the sign of, of, of covenant is circumcision, but it is our heart which is circumcised. Amen. So there is a level of worship, of entering in, which is actually a covenant with the Lord. Amen. You have covenanted to worship the Lord. You receive the truth, a revelation of truth. And now you have set your heart to worship him, amen, with, the, with all your heart. It's a revelation. That's why you're able, by the knowledge of the truth, that's why you're able to enter into a covenant of worship. And so that's what the Bible says, not one who is one outwardly, not a Jew, but inwardly, whose circumcision is of the heart, not of the letter, whose praise is of God and not to man. And again, in Philippians, Philippians 3.3, 3, salvation is of the Jews. Who is a Jew? People of God. How are you the people of God? Through covenant with the Lord. What, what is the sign of covenant? Circumcision. Where's the circumcision? In the heart, not in the flesh. So it's, it's representing that you, 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 are, you are one with God. You are aligned with God. You are in covenant with the Lord. Amen. It says, Philippians 3.3, 3, for we are the circumcision, that's in covenant with the Lord, who worship God in the spirit, who rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So when you lay down the flesh, amen, then you and receive Jesus as, as Lord, amen, that, that covenant, you enter into covenant with the Lord. 
So if God says old covenant, and there's an old covenant, if God says new covenant, there's, there's a new covenant. So there is an aspect of covenant, amen, which is revealed through, through worship, amen. So the hour, the dispensation of a revelation of true worship. God is looking for true worshipers, amen, and that will worship him. Where's the place? We worship the Lord in the spirit and in truth, amen. The reality, the Holy Spirit represents the reality of what is true, amen. In Revelations chapter 19, Revelations chapter 19, verse 10, amen. I'm going to try to speed it up, amen. This is John the Revelator. He, in verse 10, 1910, he says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. He's talking about the angel that he saw there in heaven. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. So he says, don't worship me, worship God. He says that I'm a fellow servant along with your brethren that have the testimony of Jesus for the spirit of prophecy. Amen. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. So we know the apostles that they testified of Jesus, that Jesus was raised from the dead. And so the prophecy, the prophetic word in the Old Testament and that which is uh, in the New Testament, amen, it is the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, amen. And so we will, we will testify the Lord, amen, that Jesus is raised from the dead. What is the Bible? It's the testimony of Jesus. Amen. Old Testament and New Testament is the testimony of Jesus. That comes by revelation. There's a veil there unless you enter in through worship. Amen. You say that. How can you say that? Amen. That I can just say that Jesus is my Lord and I can be saved. Yeah, but what are you going to do after Jesus is your Lord? You're supposed to worship your Lord. You're supposed to worship the King of Kings. You're supposed to worship your master by revelation, by love. A revelation of love and not by compulsion. Amen. And so even service unto the Lord. Now you enter into service unto the Lord is by worship. Amen. You do it because you adore him. Because you love him. You love him as you adore him. And because you're loving him, whatever you're doing for him, it is, it is because you love him. It is because you adore him. You fall prostrate before him because you love him. Amen. In Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 1 through 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. The Apostle Paul says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit or the Holy Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? So that's the question that the Lord gave me to teach. That's what I want to deal with. Amen. He says, are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now being made perfect by, by the flesh? So it is, it is the Holy Spirit. The word begun means that you started in the spirit. That's how you got born again. Remember, God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. God is seeking true worshipers. We read that in St. John chapter 4. God is looking for true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And so you began in the spirit. That's how you got born again. So I can, I can boldly say you began in the spirit. Amen. You were born again by the spirit. Same spirit that raised Jesus 
from the dead. Amen. Dwells in you. Amen. So you began, the Apostle Paul taught the church at Galatia that which was sound doctrine, that which was by the Spirit of God and that which was true. Judaizers came in to try to pervert the gospel to get them, the people, to follow them. Amen. That was the main purpose of the Judaizers that came in. They were jealous of Paul. Paul who taught by the Spirit that which was of the Lord. Remember, Paul is an apostle, so he's, he's laying a foundation. Amen. The word of the Lord came to the apostle Paul, the revelation of Jesus Christ. He did not learn it of man. Read the chapters 1 and 2 amen, of Galatians. He, he did not receive it from man. Amen. He did not learn it. Why? Because he was an apostle. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so he taught them sound doctrine, yet the Judaizers came in and he says, if anyone teach any other gospel than that which you have received, let them be accursed. I said it once, I said again. If anyone teach anything different than this apostolic doctrine that I've taught you, let them be accursed. Amen. Why was Paul so strong about that? Because they began in the spirit. So the Holy Spirit is always the beginning point of that which is of the Lord, that which is built of the Lord is the Holy Spirit. That which is planted is always started. The beginning point, amen, of that which God will establish is that which is by the Holy Spirit. That the Bible says even the, the scripture came about as men were moved upon by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, so you can trust that that beginning part, amen, that foundation which is established of the Lord, it is, it is by the Spirit. So the beginning part, amen, is the Holy Spirit. I know I'm seeing the same thing. The starting point, the starting point, the beginning, the first part, amen, the foundation, hallelujah, where you met the Lord, where you fell in love with him, where he began to establish you. So the beginning point is where you met the Lord. Amen. Th that you actually met the Lord. The Holy Spirit was there drawing you. Amen. Unto the Lord. Do you get it? It is like the faithful servant. Amen. That is drawing you. Amen. That it is, it, is, it is the faithful servant who found the bride for Isaac. Amen. Join that together. Amen. Being faithful to Abraham. Amen. The Holy Spirit is, is faithful. Amen. To draw us unto the Lord. Amen. So the starting point. Amen. And then... Back in Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 18. Galatians 2.18. Paul says, For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. In other words, when you came to the Lord, all things were new. Amen. The, the world lost its hold upon you. Amen. And so that, that idol worship, that false worship, you worshiped things before your first love. You did not know love. You loved things, amen, other than the Lord. But once you found the Lord and loved him, all the things that you thought you loved changed. The, the, your, your priorities, your perspective changed. You did not even know love until you found him. Amen. You did not know truth until you found him. Amen. You did not know righteousness until you found him. So that means that that which was old was destroyed. It is, it is done away with. 
And so you're not supposed to go back and rebuild those old altars, that, that pagan worship, as it were. Amen. And yes, I am saying everything outside of the love of God can pull you the wrong way as it is pagan worship. It's lifting up your soul to idol. So you're not supposed to rebuild those things that are destroyed. Amen. You make yourself a transgressor. Amen. So God is, is bringing you that which is new. Amen. In Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. Verses 10 through 22. So bear with me. I, I know this is, you know, a few scriptures, but just, just bear with me. It says, now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. And the land which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and the east and to the north and south. And in you all the seed of all families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I'm with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I've done what I, was, what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And then Jacob rose early in the morning and took this stone that he had put at his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on the top of it and called the name of that place Bethel but the name of that city had been Luz previously Bethel is the house of God then Jacob made a vow saying if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace the Lord shall be my God now remember what is a Jew a Jew is the, the people of God. Now, even though he's a descendant of Abraham and Isaac, amen, and they had established covenants with God, that he had to enter into covenant with the Lord for the Lord to be his God, for him to be the people of God. And this stone, verse 22, which I've set up as a pillar, shall be God's house. So it represents God's house, amen. And all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Amen. So the, he called the place Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. And that he memorialized that place by setting up the stone that he slept upon, poured oil upon it. And he said, this stone shall be the house of God. Now think about what happened. He had a dream where there was no obstacle between heaven and earth. He saw heaven open. He saw angels ascending and descending. There was, there was no veil. Amen. He saw clearly into heaven. He saw clearly angels assignment from heaven to earth. Amen. He saw a, a, a place of God. Amen. A place where God wanted to deal with him without a veil. Amen. A way for God to deal with him. Amen. For him to see and to know and to expand his vision to that which is of a heavenly, heavenly vision. Amen. And so the stone represents Jesus. He slept upon the stone. Amen. And so he entered into that rest. It was a representation where you rested upon the stone, you slept on the stone, you cease 
from your own labors. You enter into the rest or God doing things for you through faith as you believe God. The works of God, they were finished from the foundations of the world, even that which pertains to Jacob. Amen, God, knowing him. But you still have to enter into a level of worship. And so what did he do? That, that, that he honored the Lord through worship. Amen. He took the stone. He entered into the rest. He recognized that. He recognized that he had entered into covenant. He answered the Lord. He says, Lord, you'll be my God. God says, I'm going to make your descendants. Amen. Many. Amen. I'm going to bless you. Just like I told Abraham, just like I told your father Isaac, I'm going to do to you. Amen. And so he says, Lord, if you will do that, if you will provide food and clothing and take care of me and, and make sure that I get back to my father's house in peace, then you'll be my God. So he entered into covenant with the Lord. And so the, what the Lord showed me, he says, there's a level, there's a level of worship, amen, where you enter into covenant with the Lord. All the fear and inhibitions within you of approaching the Lord that deep. The Bible says deep calls unto deep. Amen. All those things are moved away and, and the veil between heaven and earth is moved away. Amen. As you enter into, into that place. Amen. And he also said that this is an awesome place. This is a fearful place. So also a factor is the fear of God. You entered into a place of worship, amen, where you see the fear of God, amen, that you begin to fear the Lord that deeply. That fear is, is not a terrible thing. It is tied to love. It is tied to obedience. It is, it is, it is tied to loyalty to God, amen. If you don't fear the Lord, you won't be loyal to amen. him, amen. That, that is the bottom line. And so this was the initial place where Jacob was introduced unto God, where he met the Lord, amen, and the veil was taken away, and he continued on in worship unto the Lord. He, he did what, what the time called for, amen. He entered and to a level that he had not operated in before, a knowledge of God that he had not entered into before, a level of intimacy that he had not entered into before. Amen. So this, hallelujah. Whew. So this is the place where he fell in love with the Lord. That's important. Amen. There must be a place where you fall in love with the Lord and you give him worship. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is at that place. That is the actual place where God has you. Amen. And you're not supposed to rebuild those old altars. You build an altar unto the Lord at that place or you remember, you memorialize that place where you fell in love with the Lord. That was true worship. God is, he is seeking those who will worship him Amen. in spirit and in truth. So true love for God is the place of spirit. It's capitalized, the Holy Spirit, and in truth. True love, amen. You say you love, how do you know? <laughs> the Holy Spirit will show you. He will draw you. He, yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> he will bring you to a place of worship. Worship also means to fall prostrate, amen. To die to self. Amen. And to die to your, to, to your old life. Amen. And then in Genesis chapter 35, and like I said, I, I'm going to read these scriptures quickly. Y'all can go yourselves and read these scriptures. Jacob returns to the place. Amen. Where he first fell in love with the Lord. So worship, you will always return to that place. Hustle and bustle of the day. You've got to get to God. You've got to get to that place. It's not that natural place. Amen. Though you may have a special place 
a, a secret place in your prayer closet. It is not the mountains of Samaria. It's not the place in Jerusalem. It's not that natural place. Amen. Yet it is a place. Amen. And so this is symbolic. Jacob returns to the place. Verse 1, then God said to Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your, your garments. So even though Jacob was being pure before the Lord, those in his household had other altars. Jacob said, I'm going to the house of God. Y'all put away those foreign gods. Put away those altars. Verse 3, then let us arise and go to Bethel, and I will make an altar to God who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree which was by Shechem, and they <coughs> journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. Amen. That's, that's another story. But let's just say the fear of God was, was in the land. Amen. So even the people were fearing God as they had put away those strange gods. Amen. And he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel because their God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. So the God of Bethel. Now, Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died, and she was buried below Bethel under the Terebinth tree. So the name of it was called Alon Bakuth. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave to Abraham and Isaac I give to you, and your descendants after I give you this land. So God is confirming his covenant when Jacob came back to the place Amen. Where he fell in love with the Lord first, where he built an altar to the Lord first, where he worshiped the Lord first. Amen. I want you to see that. Verse 13, then God went up from him in that place where he talked with him. So Jacob set a pillar in the place where he talked with him, a pillar stone, and he poured a drink offering on it and he poured oil on it like the first and Jacob called the name of that place where God spoke to him, Bethel, or the house of God. So again, Jacob made an altar unto God, and Jacob erected an, a pillar, amen, and he called it the house of God, like the first, amen. And so what is that pillar? That pillar is the chief cornerstone. A pillar is that which a house is supported on, amen, you know how Samson moved those pillars and the whole house fell. Amen. And so a pillar, that place of worship, of loving the Lord was because Jesus, because Jacob, he replicated that place, that, that pillar, the house of God, that pillar is the chief cornerstone. That pillar represents that the Lord gave him rest. That pillar represents Jesus not only as the foundation, but also the chief cornerstone of your, of your life. Amen. So, J so Jacob returned to Bethel and he worshiped the Lord the, the same way he worshiped him at first. So he did not lose his love. In fact, worship, amen, it only showed forth or fortified that love that he had for the Lord. Amen. God is looking for worshipers, true worshipers. What is the truth? That beginning part by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so the oil represents the Holy Ghost. The pillar represents Jesus. The stone represents 
Jesus, the beginning place where you fell in love with the Lord. You have to be able to return to that place because the Bible says, if I rebuild those things which were torn down. And so that if you rebuild the things that were torn down, you're, you're getting rid of your, your passageway to that place where you first fell in love with the Lord. You're loving other things. Amen. You have other altars. Amen. You have idols. Amen. So Jacob returned to the place where he fell in love with the Lord. In Hebrews, now Revelation. The book of Revelations. Chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Amen. So this is Jesus speaking to the church at Ephesus. He says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Amen. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. Amen. Or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Amen. So it's the, it's the church without love. They're trusting in their own works, their own wealth, and all those things. I won't read all of that. And so Jesus says that your problem is that you left the first, your first love. Amen. And he says, so you're going to have to do your first works. In other words, repent and ask the Lord to restore you into that love where he brought you into himself. Amen. And that even if you have not known the Lord in that depth, that the Lord will give you that type of love to love him with. Amen. That is what God is, God is seeking. Amen. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verses 42 through 44. And Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls upon the stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind them unto powder. Amen. And so you, you have to have a level of brokenness. You cannot trust in this world. You cannot trust in self. You cannot trust in flesh. You cannot trust in other people. The, the coming, the initial coming to the Lord is one where you fall upon the stone that represents Jesus and you are broken. This is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense has become the chief cornerstone. That stone has become the chief cornerstone. So you have to receive him as that pillar. Amen. That, that offering. Amen. Where you pour oil. Amen. Upon that stone. Amen. And even water representing that the acknowledgement of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that which brings forth the first love, the initial, the initial act. Amen. The first. Amen. And so you must accept and receive the truth that brought you to God at first, whatever the cost. Amen. You have to be initiated Initiate it into the truth. Amen. And Hebrews chapter 10. The book of Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 32 through 34. Amen. He says, but call, but recall 
the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became a companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me in my chains, and we believe this is Paul speaking, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. You were not ashamed of the apostles' chains. Amen. Call to remembrance the first, amen, when you were first illuminated. The former days when you were first illuminated. Call to remembrance the first. Ay, 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 because it is the first that will keep you throughout your walk with the Lord. Amen. It is the first love. It is the initial acceptance of the Lord. It is entering into a covenant with the Lord where you vow a vow to the Lord to be a worshiper, a true worship, worshiper of God night and day. Amen. You will always, ay, ay, ay. Ooh, he's so strong. You will always come back to that place where you first fell in love with the Lord spiritually. Amen. It's not a natural place. It is not the mountains of Samaria. Amen. It is not a temple in Jerusalem. Amen. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. Amen. Unless the Lord tells you to go to Jerusalem. Amen. The woman at the well asks about the place. Jesus started talking about the Spirit, Holy Spirit, and the truth. <laughs> Where are we going to worship you? God. Amen. In spirit and in truth, amen. The Holy Spirit represents the initial, the laying of the foundation. The Bible says, let the Lord build a house, they labor in vain. That means by the wisdom of God, amen. The Holy Spirit represents the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit always represents the initial, the first. He's there when babies are born, amen. He are there, he is there when people get married, <laughs> amen. The initial, amen. Ay, ay, ay. Setting that holy seal upon that union. Amen. I heard the word of the Lord. Amen. It, it reminded me, when I said that, it reminded me of a word that the Lord just spoke to me. He says, what God has joined together, let, let no man put asunder. Amen. I'll say that again. I, I heard the word of the Lord. He says, what God has joined together, <laughs> amen, let no man put asunder, amen. So the question is, what has God joined, amen, because whatever God has joined is a holy union, amen, and to approach it any other way is to corrupt that which is holy, amen. Holiness, it, it, is, it is that which causes you to fear the Lord. Some people are not reverent because they are not afraid. <laughs> Amen. Jacob said this is a fearful place. This is an awesome place where he met the Lord. Where he met the Lord at the first, it produced fear of God. Amen. A fear of God that, that shook him. Amen. That David had a fear of God. Amen. That shook him. Amen. Moses had a fear of God that shook him. Amen. Noah had a fear of God that shook him. Holy Ghost. Amen. And so everybody think they know, but the Lord has called me to teach you how to enter into another level of glory, another dispensation from where you are. Amen. To be able to look at the glory and not to, to prefer the veil. Amen. That, thank God for the Old Testament showing us these things that we can appreciate in the New Testament. Amen. Oh, Father God, you're so holy. You're so righteous, so true. Lord, I bless your holy name. There's none like you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You satisfy the meek with salvation. Hallelujah. You beautify the meek. You satisfy the meek. Amen. Hallelujah. You give us 
spiritual food, spiritual clothes. Amen. Hallelujah. You cause us, hallelujah, to, to look right. Amen. Hallelujah. To have on a, a beautiful headdress. Amen. The beauty of holiness. Amen. You have provided spiritual attire and spiritual food, which is greater than anything in this earth realm. Amen. That we are beautiful. Hallelujah in the spirit. Amen. We are satisfied. Amen. In the spirit. Amen. We are not made perfect in the flesh. We began in the spirit. The first place was in the spirit. Amen. And so, Lord, we worship you in the beauty of holiness. We worship you in, in spirit and in truth. Amen. We always return to the first place that was the true place where we found you, Lord God, where we fell in love with you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.